You want to make a fabric server and use fabric mods on that server. Well, that's what this video is going to show you how to do. It's the complete guide. It's going to show you how to make a fabric server, how to allow friends to join your fabric server, and even what to do as far as mods go on your server. But I do want to mention on the front end, the server we're making in this video is not a 24-hour server. It's only up and running when your computer is up and running. On top of that, you're going to need a really good computer and internet connection in order to run this server because it's using your own computer's resources as well as your internet connection in order to run the server. And lastly, because it's using your own internet, you only want to give this out to your friends, your family, people that you trust, because anyone who gets the IP address of this server will be able to do things like DDoS you, as well as figure out where you lived under your latitude and longitude coordinates. So like I said, important that you only give this server out to people you trust. But what if you want a 24-hour server that is up all of the time? What if you want a server where you don't have to worry about who gets the IP address? And what if you want a server where it's not using your own computer's hardware? It doesn't matter what kind of computer you have, you can join the server and play on it because it's not using your computer or your internet at all other than joining the server itself. Well, that's where our company, Simple Game Hosting, comes in. Go to the first link in the description down below the breakdown.xyz slash simple to start your very own Minecraft server the simple way. At Simple Game Hosting, you can easily start a fabric server. You can also add mods and mod packs in just a few clicks and even add plugins to your server if you want. Truthfully, anyway, you want to customize your server, you can do so at Simple Game Hosting. On top of that, if you do run into any issues along the way, there's expert live chat support there to help you out. So go check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below. The breakdown.xyz slash simple to start your Minecraft server the simple way. Nevertheless, what if you don't want to use Simple Game Hosting? Well, let's go ahead and get a fabric server set up on your computer. In order to do that, we will want to start here, right? This is our in-depth guide on getting the fabric launcher, which you will need no matter what. And all of your friends who join the server will have to install fabric as well. So you can go ahead and send them this guide to get fabric installed on their own computers because anyone who joins the server needs fabric and every mod you add to the server installed locally. And fortunately, that's just a limitation of mod in Minecraft, but you can send them this guide and it will show them how to get fabric while you're getting the server set up. Let's go ahead and click on this download fabric button to go to fabric's official download page. On this page, we want to make sure we click universal jar here. And when we do, it will go ahead and download the fabric jar. You may need to keep or save this file depending on your browser. It's also worth noting that we'll need Java and might need to run the jar fix. If later on you can't open up the server file, you want to run the jar fix. But we need both of these in order to start a modded server. Java 17 specifically required for Minecraft mods and servers, so it's definitely needed for a modded server here. If you don't already have it, you can't open up the jar file we just downloaded later on. This is how you can fix that issue. Download Java, then run the jar fix. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and create a brand new folder on our desktop. So right click, create a new folder, and we're gonna title this Fabric Server. You can title it anything you want, just make sure you can remember what it is. This is where all of your server files, your world, everything will be stored, so make sure you just can identify it. Once you've done that, we wanna go find the Fabric file we downloaded. Now for me, that's gonna be in the Downloads folder here, Fabric Installer, and then drag that to your desktop. It's not gonna be there forever. Right click on it, click on Open With, and then you want to make sure Java is selected. If you don't have Java here, that's what I was talking about earlier with downloading Java and running the jar fix. Then click OK. Once this is open, first we just want to install the basically Fabric client. This is installing Fabric to our local Minecraft installation, which we'll need to play Minecraft using in order to join the server later. So we want to make sure that the version we want is selected and that the create profile is checked and click install. Once that's done, click OK. Then go over to server here. We want to make sure that it's the same version that we installed for client and then we want to come down here to launch your location. Click the three dots here on the right and then you want to select that folder you created on your desktop, fabric server, and click open. Finally, once you've confirmed that it does a fabric server there, click install and it will download all of the stuff that you need for the server except the server jar, which then we want to click download server jar there. Last and definitely not least, you want to make sure that you click generate here. So there was three clicks that we basically did there. Once that generate has been clicked, we can click done. The first thing was we clicked server, then we clicked and selected the folder. Then we clicked install, downloaded the server jar, and then generated the startup files. That was a lot, but it, it's done now. It's, it's all complete. You're good to go. We can close out of the fabric installer. And if we open up this fabric server folder here, we will see, look at that. We've got 
all the stuff we need. A start file, a server jar, a fabric server, everything is here that we need in order to start the server, all thanks to that fabric installer. How awesome is that? Now to start this server, what we wanna do is just double click on this start.bat file. When you double click on it, it's gonna fail, but it'll try to start, but it's gonna fail. That's normal, that's okay, we expect that. And that's because we need to agree to the Minecraft EULA. So as you can see, press any key to continue, close out of that. And now we have some more files and folders back here, specifically the EULA.txt file. Open this up in Notepad, and then you wanna go to the Minecraft EULA, and assuming you agree to it, which I do, we wanna change EULA equals false here to EULA equals true, T-R-U-E, exactly like that, and then click file save boom now we can double click on that start.bat file and guess what the server is going to start it's getting up and running you're good to go as far as starting the server your friends can't join at this point anything like that but you can join so let's go ahead and do that i'm going to open up the minecraft launcher and again anyone who joins the server needs to have fabric installed so let's go ahead and launch minecraft with fabric because we need to do that in order to join this server so as you can see here, fabric loader already selected for me. You may have to click in this drop down box and select it and then go ahead and click play and click play again to open Minecraft with fabric installed. I will meet you on the main menu to join this server. Now at this point, you are the only person that can join this server, by the way, your friends can't join it. No one else can join it but you, but it's worth testing at this point. Also need to change the resolution of Minecraft. Resolution fixed, server is online. You know that because it says done right there. And like I said, we can join. Let's go ahead and go to multiplayer and then we can go ahead and add this server now go ahead and click add server to do that and you can name this local connection because that's all that this is this is the local connection that only you can use to join the server but it's a good way to test at this point for the server address you want to make it local host all one word exactly like that all lowercase local host and then click done after a few seconds, it's gonna ping the server, and there it is, local connection. You can double click to join the server, and assuming you're playing Minecraft with Fabric, it will load right on in. There we go. Now, we're done as far as getting the server started and you joining the server. If you just wanted to see if you could do this, well, it's done. You can play on it, but no one else can other than you. That's because we need to allow your friends to be able to join via port forwarding. Port forwarding is how we're going to allow that, how your friends are going to be able to join and connect into this server. We're going to do all of that in this video, but first, what about adding mods to the server? Well, in order to do that, what we would want to do is stop the server by coming over here and typing stop right like so. Over here on the left in the console and hitting enter, it's going to shut the server down, save everything, and then press any key to continue. Now, if you notice on the server, there's a mods folder here. Th this is it. That's where you add all of your fabric mods. So if you go download Terra Blender and Biomes of Plenty, you can go and add those right here into the mods folder of the server, start the server, and you're good to go. If for whatever reason, after adding a mod, the server doesn't start, a lot of times a crash report will be generated. We don't have the folder right now because it doesn't generate until a crash happens, but you can go here for a crash reports folder. You open that up and you'll be able to see all the different you know issues that a server could be having with your mods. And by the way, we'll help you diagnose any crashes at Simple Game Hosting, first link in the description down below, if you do run into any of those on your modded server because you've maybe added a mod that's just not working correctly. But that can often happen if you miss a compatibility mod like Terra Blender with Miles of Plenty, or you don't have the Fabric API installed, which you a lot of times would need to add to the mods folder as well. But you're not done. Once you've added these mods to your mods folder on the server, you also need them installed locally. That is required, and it's a limitation of mod in Minecraft that all the mods have to be locally installed as well. So you would take all the mods from here, select them and copy them, and then you would come over into your local Minecraft installation of Fabric, right? So to do that, you come here. At the top, you'll click on Installations, and then you'll click on the folder that appears when you hover over Fabric. And here you'll have a mods folder and you'll add the mods here as well. For example, I have some old mods in there right now that we can remove. You would add any mods here. Every mod that's on your server has to be in here in order for you to join the server. And that goes for your friends as well. So you'll want to send those mods to your friends and they'll need to install them in that local mods folder here in Minecraft in order for things to work. But nevertheless, at this point, that's all set up. You're good to go. You've added mods to your server. But how do you allow your friends to join 
your server. Well, we need to port forward. Do you want to make sure the server stopped? Let's go ahead and get your friends online by first opening up the CMD. So come here to the Windows icon. It's probably in the bottom left for you. Type in CMD and you'll have command prompt. Open that up and then in command prompt, what we want to do is type IP CON FIG. IP config exactly like that and hit enter. It's going to give us a bunch of information. We need two numbers from here. So I'm going to go ahead and open notepad to write these numbers down and well, take a note of them so we can use them later. The first number we need is our IPv4 address, which is right here. In my case, that's 192.168.1.2, but for you, it could be a different number. It probably is. For your default gateway, that's the next number we need, but we don't need the one that's really long in numbers and letters. This super long string here, we just need this one that's under it, 192.168.1.1 in my case, but for you, it could be the same or it could be different, but again, we don't need this one that's numbers and letters up here at the top. We just need this one, this one that's just numbers. We can then close out a command prompt and what we wanna do is open up our browser. And then in our browser, in a brand new tab, up at the top where you would normally type in, simplegamehosting.com, thebreakdown.xyz, youtube.com, where you would normally type in a website, paste in the default gateway that we just got. So in my case, 192.168.1.1, and then hit enter. Some sort of a login box is going to appear here. And for me, it just pops in from the top. For you, it may be a pop-up window. It might be a GUI, like on the page, but you're gonna get some sort of login box here. What do you enter? Well, it's your router's username and password, which is different from your Wi-Fi password. And in the description down below, we have this, a guide on how to find your router's password. Start with method one, two, three, all the way down through method five. It covers everything you will need to do. Um, generally, people find it with method one or two, and sometimes you have to go all the way to method four. Rarely do people have to contact their ISP to get their router information. But now we can go ahead and log in. I'm gonna do that and I'll meet you inside of my router. Once you're in your router, you wanna look for port forwarding or port triggering or a bunch of other names that I'll give you here in a second. But first, we do have this, which is worth a watch. It's how to port forward on any router. And even if your specific router isn't in that video, which we go over a lot of the most popular ones, it's still worth watching because you'll pick up a lot of the terms and potential locations that port forwarding could be in your router. So you'll pick up the different locations, the different GUIs and things like that. And even if your router isn't in that video, a lot of routers use the same software. So it's worth checking out. But nevertheless, in my router, it's going to be an advanced, then advanced again, and then port forwarding slash port triggering. For you, it could be in apps and gaming. It could be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It could be in security. It could be in the firewall tab. It could be in the just simply port forwarding tab. It could be in an administration tab, an admin tab, an advanced tab, or in an advanced and advanced again tab. It could be in the setup tab, security. I think I've already said security or apps and gaming. Popularly, it is in apps and gaming. So if that is the case, click on that because uh, that's probably where port forwarding is. From there, you may be looking for single port forwarding, port forwarding slash port triggering, port triggering slash port forwarding, or just simply a port forwarding section. For me, it is port forwarding slash port triggering. Once you've found port forwarding, you wanna add a new port forward. In my case, that's by clicking add a custom service. But for you, it could be literally just a big list of empty dialog boxes. And in that case, you'll wanna start with the first one and enter in the information you need. Nevertheless, add a service, add a port forward, whatever you need to do. And then the information is generally the same. The first thing you're going to need is a service name or an ID or a name, something to let you know what this port forward is for. That's it. You can do anything. We're going to do a fabric Minecraft server because, well, that's what this is for, a fabric Minecraft server. For the protocol, you want to do both. Literally, it can be the word both, or it can be TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or again, the word both. If for whatever reason you can't select both of these, most likely you'll be able to, but if you can't, just do this twice. Once for TCP, once for UDP, leaving everything else the same. For anything involving the word port, P-O-R-T, port, you wanna enter in 25565. So if it's external port, internal port, first port, second port, inside port, outside port, doesn't matter what it is, anything involving the word port, you wanna enter 25565. Next one, internal port. Hey, there's that word port. Every time I see the word port, 25565 is what I enter. Last but not least, the internal IP address here is going to be that IPv4 address we found earlier. In my case, 192.168.1.2. Now, you may have a big list of basically devices that are on your network to select from instead of entering in the internal IP address. 
And if that's the case, just select the computer that you're making the Minecraft server on, because that's what this is. This is selecting that device on your network, either via the IP address or via a drop-down box or a list. Nevertheless, with all this done, most of you are done. You can click apply. Some of you will have an external or outside IP, though. If that's you, well then, that's okay, because every single person watching this video needs their external outside IP address, because that's what their friends are going to use to join the server. So let's go ahead and go to the link in the description, what's my IP, and what this is doing is taking your IP address and giving it back to you. But you can see here the information people can get from this, your city, your state, your latitude and longitude coordinates from your IP address. So it's super important that you don't give this out to anybody and everybody. It's why for me, you can only see 4-3 at the end, right? You don't want to give the entire thing out to everybody. And I just want to make sure you know that we're using the same IP here as we do later in Minecraft. But that is why it is so important that you only give this to people you trust. On top of that, anyone can DDoS you. There are other security risks, things like that. But generally, it is important that you keep this as private as possible. And that's why simple game hosting exists to where you can give the server IP address out to everybody. Simple game hosting takes care of all the security stuff. Nevertheless, we can now go ahead and go back to our router. If you needed your public IP, you could use it there or your external IP. You can use that here. Otherwise, let's go ahead and join Minecraft or our Minecraft server with it. So minimize our browser. And then we want to go ahead and start the server by using that start.bat file here. Then we want to open up Minecraft with Fabric. We want to make sure that Fabric is what we're playing when we're opening Minecraft. We'll be able to see here, once it's open, that it should automatically be selected for us because that's what we last played with. Fabric is selected. Click play, and I'll meet you on the main menu to join this server, this time using our public IP. So here we are on the Minecraft main menu. We can go ahead and click on multiplayer, click proceed, and then we want to click add server here. Now, you can see local connection and our simple game hosting server are already up. You can join via local connection, but again, your friends can't. So how do your friends join? Well, we want to add a server here. We'll call this our public IP because that's what it is. And then for the server address, we want to put in the IP address we just got from the What's My IP website there. So in my case, that has 4.3 at the end. It's the same IP I had earlier. For you, it'll be whatever your public IP is. And this is the IP address you'll send to your friends for them to join. Click done. And then after a few seconds, it will resolve. And there you go. Now I know for me, I can use my public IP to join, but you may not be able to. And that's okay. As long as your friends can use your public IP, that is all that matters because you can always join via that local connection, that local host IP that we set up earlier in the video to test things and make sure things were working correctly. So as long as your friends can join your public IP, that's okay. You might not be able to because your ISP might not allow you to. Your internet service provider might just not let you connect back to yourself via your public IP. It is a little weird that you're trying to do that, but I know mine allows it. Most ISPs do, but some do not. And if that is your ISP, that's okay because you can connect via the local host. Your friends are the only people that have to use that public IP address. Now, with that being said, what if your friends can't join after you've port forwarded? Well, it's probably Windows Defender Firewall. And in the description down below, we have this, which is a guide on how to fix Java and allow it through your Windows Defender Firewall for Minecraft servers. It's helped over 300,000 people and it will help you too to allow your friends to join your server. We also have this, which is an in-depth guide on fixing different Minecraft server issues, including modded server issues that might be worth a watch now that you're a server admin. Also linked in the description down below, by the way. Nonetheless, at this point, though, your server is now up and running. And the last thing I want to leave you with is remember, once you add mods to your server, your friends and you will have to add those mods locally to your local Minecraft mods folder in order to join, in addition to them being on the server. So they need to be in the server mods folder, right? They need to be in this mods folder here, but they also need to be in the mods folder within the Minecraft launcher in order for you to be able to join. They need to be in both places. Your friends just need them on the Minecraft launcher in order to join, but it is sadly a limitation of modded Minecraft that that is the case. Nevertheless, we'll see you in the next video. Enjoy your new Fabric server and subscribe for more incredible content every single day of the week. I am out. Peace.